Well, some of y'all had to press through to get here today, and that's all right, but you got here. Some of y'all had to fight through some things to get here this morning, but you got here. Some of y'all in pain this morning, but you showed up anyway. Oh, man, some of y'all hurt real bad out there, but you still came. The point is, you got here. So you're in the house amongst saints, people that love you and love the Lord. We want to welcome our online family this morning. So everybody in here, if you got strength in your hands right now, can we just put our hands together? Hallelujah. Can we just put our Hallelujah. hands together? Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together? Y'all can do better Hallelujah. than that. If you love the Lord this morning, you, Lord. put your Thank hands you, together. Thank you, you know, today is Super Bowl Sunday. And all those people out in Las Vegas are going to fill that stadium. And they're going to be buck wild today. They're going to be shouting and screaming for their favorite team. Right. So we need to scream and shout for our hey. favorite team. Jesus, if you on Team Jesus side, give him some praise right now. Oh yeah, those who are working with us out there online this morning, give him some praise. If you're there by yourself this morning, stand up and give him some praise. Because without him, we are nothing. We are nothing without him. Oh man, every breath we take, every move we make, it's all because of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Can y'all say Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. There's something Jesus. about that name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Without him, we would be nothing. We would have nothing. Oh, let's bow our heads and get ready for service this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. we just come before you this morning, Lord, giving you all the praise. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Father, we're so thankful that you think about us, Father. You think about each one of us individually, Father. You know our name. Yes, Father, God. you know each one of our names. And you have Thank purpose you, for us, oh God. Lord, we ask that you bless this service today. We ask that you bless all those who are here today and those who are worshiping with us online. Father, we ask that someone somewhere hears something, sees something, and know that you are real. We want to know that you can help them, you can save them, you can change their life. Father, we ask that you bless the word that's coming forth today, that it pierces and penetrates the heart of all of us. And Father, just do a mighty work in this house today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We put our hands together. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. We're talking about the King of Kings. Give him a praise. Yeah. Yeah. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Shout hallelujah. 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 To our risen King. Hallelujah. We bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. We thank him for another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. How many glad about it? Are you glad this morning? I see some smiles on so many faces, hallelujah, that say I'm glad to be in the house of the land of the living this morning. Glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time, hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a hand. Hallelujah. We bless his name because he's better than good. Somebody shout better than good this morning. Bless the Lord at all times. And his praises should continually be in my mouth No matter what I see or how I feel Long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord How many believe it? Long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Hallelujah, we bless your name Let us 
Amen, amen. Welcome, welcome. Glad to see all these smiling faces here this morning. Amen. To our folks out in TV land, welcome, welcome on Facebook. <laughs> we have a few uh, announcements this morning. Our Sunday social party is the first Sunday of each month. Uh, it's a great time for fellowship, break yeah. bread together, uh, get to meet our leaders, and uh, just uh, get to talk to know and know each other. Uh, it's a great time. Amen. Uh, we have new member partner orientation on Mondays at 7.45 p.m. Uh, you can connect to the orientation via Zoom through the website, revivechurchatl.org. Uh, you will get a text message reminder about that. We offer Men Talk Tuesdays on Tuesdays through revivechurchatl.org where men can get together in a safe space and uh, just talk about anything, share their feelings. On Wednesdays, we have Discipleship Bible Study at 7 p.m. The ladies meet every first Saturday of the month to get together and uh, have a good time and discuss different topics. The Marriage Couples Group meets online at every second Saturday of the month. Uh, for details, again, revivechurchatl.org. And don't forget, Family Game Night coming up this Friday. Amen, amen. Uh, we will Fridays at, from 7 to 9 p.m. 
at 2655 Cobb Parkway in Kennesaw. Uh, go to revivechurchatl.org for more details and uh, directions on how to get there. And also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. God bless you. Enjoy the service. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder, for those announcements. Hallelujah. Will you rise back to your feet as we continue to worship our God? We want to just encourage you this morning. You look at someone and just tell them God is still in control. God is still in control. Hallelujah. He still sits on the throne. He's still king of kings. He's still more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we can ask or think. Hallelujah. We can trust in the Lord with all our heart. That's good to know. And lean not to our own understanding. Hallelujah. Come on, give, give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, let's put our hands together. Y'all say glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey. Yes. I can't hold back this break. This fire in my bones. Come on, come on. No rock.
Glory, hallelujah to you, God. Glory, hallelujah to you, God. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We exalt you, oh God. Hallelujah. We praise your name. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is our good, good shepherd this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Thank you, oh God. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. I won't fear. Thank you, oh God. I won't fear. I'm filled with the noise. I'm filled with the noise. Thank you, oh God. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. Somebody shout, I won't be. I won't. Hallelujah. Be. And people of God say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not alone. We encourage you this morning. Hallelujah. He's my comfort. He's Hallelujah. My and he always holds me close. Yes, God. Oh, you know what? He always guides me. He always guides me.
is the good, good shepherd this morning. He is the great I am this morning. Come on, give him a shout this morning. Who is he to you? Hallelujah. Is he your everything this morning? Somebody say, he's, I'm nothing without him. That's what I heard somebody say. I'm nothing without him. He is my strength today. He is my joy today. He is my hope today. He is my peace. Because I had a rough week. He's been my peace this week. Somebody say that. Hallelujah. Somebody say, he healed my body this week. Hallelujah. 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 I was racking with pain this week. But God's been my peace been my healer hallelujah he healed me he healed me he healed my mind this week hallelujah 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 he healed my marriage this week hallelujah hallelujah he healed my home this morning everybody in my household hallelujah thank you God thank you God what has God done for you hallelujah think about it we worship you oh God because you are great and greatly to be praised and we give you all of the honor and all of the praise this morning God there's nobody like you God we can't say it enough there's nobody like you and we give you all the honor and the praise and we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart will be acceptable in your sight oh God receive our worship this morning God it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray let the church say amen amen hallelujah Give God a hand praise on the day. Give God a hand praise on the day. Give our choir a hand praise on the day. Because they lift us up. They keep us going. They keep us motivated. Keep us in touch. They keep us in tune. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Amen. 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 Truly given honor to the of our life. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our pastor, his wife, and all the members that are out there on the day, I just thank you. I thank God for keeping you thus far. I thank God for allowing you to believe in him. I thank God for just helping us cross over. I thank God for all that he does for us. Even when he says no, he still means yes. But we don't understand the things of God. We don't understand. We always want God to fulfill what we want him to fulfill. But God has a better plan. And that's why when things don't happen and God says he can't do it, it's not that he hasn't done it. It's just because it's for your own benefit. And we just thank you on God. We just thank you, God, on today. And we ask these many blessings your darling son, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 Are we ready for it today? You know, we, you know, everybody looking forward for game day and all that and everything, and, you know, get back and fellowship. But there ain't nothing wrong with, uh, with game day. Children's church. It's time for the children to be dismissed. Time for the children to be dismissed. Go ahead, children. Go ahead and get your bread. Amen. You know, we're in a series called Red Flags and Relationships. And I'm going to be coming to you with something that is very important to each and every one of us. And relationship, we have to know and understand how to maintain the relationship. We have to know and understand how to keep the relationship. But you know, we focus so much on relationships of individuals and our homes and our children and our jobs. We want to think about that relationship. But the main relationship 
It's Jesus. Nothing else matters when it comes to a relationship. Because if you line up with God, he'll take care of the rest. But, you know, we have a hard time believing that God is going to fix this relationship. Oh, I, I prayed. I fasted. I asked God to, to, to change some things, but, but yet, yet she's still coming at me. He's still coming at me. My children are still coming at me. The reason why all these things are happening because you didn't ask God. God said you're supposed to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your might, and all your mind. And if you put that first, then God will take care of the rest. Amen? Do you believe that your relationship with Jesus Christ is more important than your soulmate? Do you believe that your relationship with Jesus Christ is more important than your child? Do you believe that Jesus Christ, the relationship with Jesus Christ is more important than anything in this world? Then why do we keep fighting with the situations in our home? Why do we keep fighting with the situations on our job? Why do we keep fighting with the situations that's happening in our church and around the world today? Because we didn't push God aside. But we're going to get into the meat of the matter. We're going to be coming out of the, out of the book of 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. And we're going to be starting at the 17th first. But before we lay this foundation, I'm going to lay the foundation in the, in the book of uh, Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. Now, this is prophecy. Now, Jesus was prophesying, I mean, uh, Ezekiel was prophesying about a new heart. He was talking about, I want to change my people. I want, I want my people to know and understand that they did their Heavenly Father wrong. And you know, sometimes that we do things that we think that is real cool. We can puff, puff, pass. We can toss it up. We can tilt it down. We can shake a tail feather. And we can do all these things. But the topic of this message on today is the thrill is gone. And I'm coming out of Ezekiel 36. And I just wanted just to give you kind of a wake up on what God is trying to do with us. Amen? Amen. Starting at the 24th verse. This is for I will take from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land, into your own establishment. In other words, I'll make things right where you at. Okay? Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. You know, your idols, you have things that you don't want to give up. See, it ain't things that's just made with hand. It's, thing, it's your lifestyle. Your lifestyle can become an idol. It's not, you know, you can buy a car and worship. It's not that you have, you know, trinkets in your house. No, an idol is a lifestyle. Things that you don't want to change in your life becomes an idol. Why? Because you gravitate to that thing more than who? Jesus. Verse 26. And a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. In other words, I'm going to take all that nonsense that's in you, out of you, and I'm going to put something fresh back in you. See, this is why the thrill is gone, because you done lost your desire for your first love. Now, he's trying to explain to you what he's getting ready to do, but all you got to do is just understand that, hey, I can change this. But you got to know and understand that you got to allow him to work on you. Sometimes we fight so much of change. When it comes time to change, we fight against that change. Oh, we don't want to change. But we want God to give us all the good things. But we don't want to, we don't want to put ourselves in a position to do the work and changing. Now, this is what he says. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my 
judgments and do them. You should keep them. You should keep my judgments and do them. Do we keep his judgments and do them? No, we don't, because I don't. I don't. I get a little sideways sometimes. I get a little bent out of shape. I know God knows sometimes he looks down there and says, boy, are you ugly? Especially today. I'm like, well, God, I, I, and I ain't got no excuse. So we don't have no excuse. And we wonder why things happen in our homes and why we can't say things to other people. It's because the thrill is gone. And the reason why the thrill is gone, because that fear comes upon you to voice your opinion on what you believe is right. Well, let's get into the meat of the matter. Trust me, we, 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 we're going to be here just for a short time. For a short time. I'm just going to get straight to the point and make it clear unto you why the thrill is gone. You remember that old song, The Thrill is Gone? By B.B. King, you know, later, you know, parents used to play this music, you know, back in 1975, there's a group called The Impressions. And they sung a song called, the same thing it took to get your baby is going to take the same thing to keep her. Yeah, and you going through all them trials and tribulations, and then all of a sudden, you know, you come over to their house, and then they playing B.B. King. The thrill is gone. The thrill is gone away. And you wonder why it's gone. You wonder why that thrill is gone, but, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you was playing the same thing it took. But now, he's talking about the thrill. What's wrong with you, girl? You know, I just can't. Boy, I'm te I just, you know, I wish I could. Mm. Same thing happened in your house is the same thing happened in my house. Well, if the same thing happened in your house and the same thing happened in my house, you need to get together and talk about it with God. Talk about why it happened. How did it creep in? How did you let it in? See, you weren't on guard. You know, you were so happy with the excitement and how, how, how it made you feel. And then all of a sudden, you let your guard down. You let your guard down. And that's why the thrill is gone. Let's get into the meat of the matter. 2 Corinthians 5, starting at verse 17. Starting at 17. Now we're going to go in this passage and we're going to hear a word a couple of times. And then I'm going to break that word down for you. Amen? Because in 2 Corinthians 5, it talks about, it talks about reconciliation. And see, that's the thing that was wrong. See, we don't know how to reconcile our differences. And once we learn and understand how to reconcile our differences, then the, the, the thrill, it won't be gone. It'll come back to the joy. You come back and you have that joy of the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold. See that behold, you got to stop right there. Behold, that means, hey, look, I'm a new creature. Some things has changed. Some things changed in my life. Behold, all things are become new. Now, what was so difficult with you changing to become a new person? It was hard for you to understand that, golly, I done made that individual, I done made her so mad that I don't think she's going to forgive me. I done made him so mad that, you know what, I don't think he loved me no more. But since we getting into the meat of the matter, let's go to John 6 and 63. John 6 and 63. You have your Bibles, you hear the rustle of other leaves again. John 6 and 63. I, I, I like bringing my Bible. I ain't into technology that good, you know, my son and them, they know that. You know, John 6, 63. I'm just an old school preacher. And that's just the way it is. Amen. John 6, John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, 
the flesh profit is nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right there and in. When God says you must worship me in spirit and in truth, he means that the spirit, what you speak is spirit. Life and death is the power of the tongue and anything you speak that is spiritual. So when you say something to hurt someone or when you say something to offend someone, you didn't pour something spirit, something spiritually evil to condemn that person because instead of you speaking death, you should have been speaking life. So when God says to worship in spirit and in truth, and when you hear the word spirit in the Bible, that means you're speaking. Just like I'm speaking right now, the breath of God is coming out. And life is entering in. For those of you that will receive it, you'll live. But those of you that want to receive it, you'll perish. It's all about God. It's all about God. When you start speaking kind things to someone, then you'll know and understand what it means by the Spirit. Let's go to Romans 8 and 9. Romans 8 and 9. I want you to get this and understand. I just want you to get this. Because this is very important and you want to understand why your house tore up and the thrill is gone. Well, this is why. But we're going to get into the meat of the matter anyway. Amen? Romans 8 and 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the what? In the spirit. In the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So in other words, if you ain't speaking the word of God, you ain't none of his. And we wonder why things are tore up in our home. We wonder why our lifestyle hasn't changed. Because you haven't given God a chance to fix it. Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 43 and 18. Isaiah 43 and 18. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Oh, he's telling you. Just like he said right here in the, verse 17, 2 Corinthians. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. A new creature. Old things are passed away. What do you keep holding on to that old lifestyle for? You hold on to that old lifestyle because, see, that pleases other people because they see you one way, but they don't want you to change for the better of yourself. As long as they can see you the same way that you are, they fine. We care more about what people have to say on the outside than what God has to say to us. And you wonder why the thrill is gone and why things are not happening in your life is because you don't want to obey what God is saying to you. But you'd rather just stay in that old lifestyle and not believe what someone is saying. I can sit up here and preach until you're blue in the face, but you can walk out of here and turn around and do the same thing. Oh yeah, that was a good message. But see, it's the thing, it's the difference between teaching and preaching. Teaching, you educate. Preaching makes the change your life. And I'm preaching. So is my life perfect? Yeah, it is. It's perfect in spirit. It's perfect in spirit. My flesh is not perfect. But your spirit is perfect. Because what God breathed in you was perfect. It came alive. And you don't understand that? When the Spirit, when he blew that breath of life inside of you, it was perfect. Why was it perfect? Because you're functioning. You can see, you can talk, you can move, you can laugh, you can run, you can eat. You can do things with your hands. You become an artist, a lawyer, a doctor. All because of that breath of life. And you wonder why 
you're still stuck in the same position that you are in today is because the thrill is gone because you don't give God a chance to work it out in your life. Ain't nothing wrong with asking God to do something for you. There's nothing wrong. Amen. Let's move on. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. See, this is where we're getting ready to get into. Reconciliation. Reconciling yourself. And I took uh, some notes down on reconciliation. Reconciliation, the act of causing two people or groups to become friendly again after an argument or a disagreement. You're fighting amongst one another. But God is trying to reconcile. See, that's why Jesus died for us, because he's trying to reconcile himself to us. And he wants us to reconcile ourself to him. It doesn't matter how we do it as long as we try. You know, I mean, you can hold on to an argument for a long time. You can say, I forgive, but I never forget. But if you don't forget, you never forgave. Because you're bringing up that what? That old nature. Every time you say you haven't forgot what you didn't forgave, you're bringing up that old nature again. And you wonder why there's so many mishaps in your life is because you're still living at an old past. And God says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and all things are passed away. Behold, look at me. All things become new. But yet and still, you'd rather live in that old rut. And you're pleased with living that old rut and in that old way. And oh, are you still driving that? You still wearing that? You still got that same furniture? You had that furniture about 15 years. When God said, oh, he said, behold, old things are passed away and all things become new. What's wrong with allowing something new to come into your life? What is it with you to where you want to hold on so tightly to something that you can't change and you don't have no control over? But God said all you have to do is speak. When you speak that spirit into that individual, guess what? It get right. Relationship, it'll get right. Reconciliation. That's what you have to do. Amen? Verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling, there he is again, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespass unto them, and hath committed us the word of reconciliation. And you wonder why the thrill is gone, because you don't want to reconcile. You don't want to even try. Reconcile. Reconciliation. The restoration of a fractured relationship by overcoming grief, pain, and anger. All that is built up inside of you and you don't want to change because you feel comfortable not reconciling because you believe that you're right. You believe that you're right and God is wrong. God is telling you, hey, forget not the former things. But yet and still, you want to stay the same that you are. You're going to try to make a believer of yourself, but you can't make a believer of somebody else when they know that you ain't changed. You cannot make a believer of someone else if you know you haven't changed. You can get all the advice. You can get everything that you need from God, but yet and still you will not reconcile yourself with God. It comes first with God. It comes first with him. And the reason why reconciliation is so important 
is because if you don't reconcile yourself with God first, I ain't talking about reconciling yourself with a, with a situation where you had an argument with your mate or your children. First, reconcile yourself with God. You know why I say God first is because, see, that's a cool down period. When you're talking to God, he's taking all that frustration, all that anger, all that malice and strife up out of you before you can come to that individual and say, hey, let's talk. Let's talk. I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk at you. I want to let you know that I do love you. I want to let you know that I do care. But, but I just had to take, take some time out to, to, to think about what I was going to say because if I would have came at you when we, was, when we was both arguing, then it would have been a mess. And you want to know and understand why the thrill is gone? That's why. The thrill is gone. And it's, and it's going to stay gone until you understand how to reconcile yourself with Jesus. Nothing's going to change in your life until you bring it to God. Nothing in your household is going to change until you bring it to God. God is the counselor. He is the mediator between us and his daddy. And he gives you all the right answers. But some of you don't believe in the right answers because you don't take the time to go into this right here. You don't take the time. If you take the time, just a little bit of time, just a little bit of time, just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm just talking about just take five minutes out of your day. Just a little bit, just a little bit, and then grow in. We, we can talk about, oh, I got the faith of a mustard seed. And I'm telling you, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, ooh, <laughs> you don't know what, what it takes to have a faith of a mustard seed. Because there's something behind that, having that little faith when you think it's just a little bit. No, it's not a little bit. When you take that faith of that mustard seed and implant it in you, it has to germinate. It has to grow. So it has to take time to grow. And then your faith increases. But once your faith increases, guess what? The Bible says that the birds and the fowls of the air come and lodge in that. So, so you're going to be in attack. So quit taking God's word out of context. Oh, I got the faith of them. No, you don't. You think you have it until you are tested in that area in your life. Can I say I have the faith of a mustard seed? <laughs> no. No, I can't. I know I'm not perfect, but one thing I am is I'm faithful. Because I know how to understand what reconciliation is all about. Reconciling my indifferences. Reconciling myself to God. So if you want things to happen in your home, it starts with that reconciliation. See, this is what Paul is trying to explain to us. He's trying to tell us what's up, how to do it. It doesn't take a preacher or a teacher to tell you what's right and what's wrong. You already know what's right and what's wrong. But yet and still, you have a tendency to live the way you want to live, and you think that's the right way, but it's not the right way. There's only one way, and that's God's way. If you believe, if you believe in this, it don't have to be believe it in the way I believe it, because if you try to believe it in the way I believe it, you'd be messed up. It won't happen. Reconcile. Verse 19. Here he is again. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespass unto them, and hath committed us the word of reconciliation. Committed us to the word of reconciliation. Let's go to uh, Colossians 1 and 20. Colossians 1 and 20. Colossians 1 and 20. 
Colossians 1 and 20. Amen? Colossians 1 and 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to what? Reconcile all things unto who? Himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. In other words, he's giving you an opportunity. You can either be with me in heaven or you can stay here on earth. But even though everything that everything it belongs to him, he still, he wants to reconcile you. He wants to bring you back into the fold. You know, we all going through some troubles, some pains, some heartaches, some disappointments. And we all have our own way. I'm not saying that you don't pray. I'm not saying that you don't talk to God. But what I'm saying while I'm sitting up here speaking to you is saying, hey, just take it a step further. Take it a step further. And you wonder why the thrill is gone with yourself and your relationship and where you go? It's because you haven't reconciled your differences. You haven't forgave. You haven't forgave. Amen. This is something important to know and understand that Jesus is trying to reconcile himself back to us. He wants us for a reason. He wants to be with us. He wants you to be with him. That's all he wants. That's all he wants. You know, we come here every Sunday to get a word. We come and get the word of God. And my prayer is that you don't leave the same way you came in. That's my job. That's, that's, that's what God give me. If I can get one, if I can just touch one heart, just one, just one heart. Somebody that I know that is truly, truly going to give their life. Get rid of this old life. Behold, all things become new. Start a new life. Start a new way. Just one. That's all it takes is just one. All it takes is one person to be so radical that everybody looking, been here for 20 years, that, that one person jumping for joy. And everybody, what's wrong with that person? Just one person can change a nation. One person. You ain't got to be afraid to get up, hoop and holler and jump around and whatever the case may be for Jesus. You don't have to. But if it's, if it's shut up in your bones like, 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 the, like, the, like the man said, it's fire shut up in my bones. If that fire is shut up in your bones, let the world know it. Don't be afraid of Jesus. Romans 1, 16 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you afraid to tell somebody about Jesus Christ? I know I ain't. Because I said before, <laughs> I preach like this because I ain't afraid of no man. And can back it up. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually. 66 bullets right here. 66. I'll pick you off anywhere in the world. Doesn't matter where you at. All I got to do is speak it. Because he give me that. Anything that offends Christ offends me. And if anything offends Christ and you, it offends me. He appointed me and anointed me to be a watchman. And that's what I have to be. I beg God, I pray to God for change of your souls. And everybody else outside these walls, everybody in the TV land, I pray because it's coming to a point to where something drastic is getting ready to happen. 
And the only person that's going to pull us out of it is Jesus Christ. So we got to reconcile ourselves. Amen. We're almost out of here. Amen. Verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as through God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. Listen to what he says again. On a personal level, it means acknowledging hurtful actions and their resulting emotions. Also, nearly 50% of couples reconcile after breakup. 50%, that's pretty decent. Should be more. Sometimes when we hurt by our loved ones, we don't, we don't want to reconcile. We want to put new tires on the car. Want to get rid of that, that, that pain. I don't, I don't want to deal with it no more. I, I just don't want it no more. I try my best to love them. I try my best to do everything I could. I try my best. I try my best. But I've just been in this situation too long. Thrill is gone. I just don't want to be in it no more. I just don't. Why do I have to be in it if I don't like it? Because God says to reconcile. There's so many situations that we don't want to be in. You're in situations right now you don't want to be in. You're trying to figure out how God is going to make this thing work. But see, God already know about your finite mind. See, you want God to work it out the way you want it to be worked out. And then you want to say, oh, yeah, thank you, God. But God is going to do it a whole different way. Do you know what it takes for old things to pass away in your life and behold, all things come new? It takes a while. It's not an overnight experience. It's a battle. It's a struggle for something to become new in your life. You know how hard it is for you to save up to buy something that you've been wanting for a long time? It's a struggle. It's a struggle to go out there and get. It's a struggle to go out there and buy a new home. It's a struggle for a marriage when you, when you, when you say, I do. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. All these things are struggled. And you think, you know, <laughs> therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It became new when you did it, when you said, I do. But then that old nature comes back. That old nature comes back. There ain't no more laughter. There ain't no more joy. There ain't no more hugging. There ain't no more touching. Ain't no and you wonder why. The reason why old things come back is because you never sat down and aired out your laundry. You never sat down and put everything on the table. See, you have hidden agendas. You have a hidden agenda. In your mind, you might be smiling, but inside, I'm going to take him for everything he got. I'm going to take her for everything he got. Yeah, I'm going to walk down this aisle with you, but yet and still, once your name is on that paper and you ain't got no right to give me no prenup, guess what? I'm going to take it. People think marriage is easy. That's where that, that's where that faith come in, in that, in that marriage. Faith. The only way it's going to work is you got to release everything that's in you to God and present it to God. And before you say, I do, you better believe that you need to be delivered from all the nonsense that is inside of you because once you get married and that nonsense that's in you comes out of you, then the thrill is gone. 
Then the thrill is gone. The first thing you want to do, you want to run to somebody and tell them that love don't live here no more. You abandon me. I don't want it. I don't want it. Well, girl, what about that guy that you see at the club? Yeah, I was thinking about him. What about that girl you see? Well, I was thinking about her too. Why? Why allow the enemy to come into your conscience and subconscious mind to plant something in your head to make you think that something else is better? Well, if you go get a set of tires and they say, well, these are 85,000 mile tires. They'll last you for a couple of years or so. They might last you for about three or four, maybe five years. And when they start, when the treads start running down, just come back and we'll replace them and give you some new ones. But sometimes you don't even want to wait to get no new ones. You replace them anyway. You replace them without reconciling your difference. And that's what's wrong. And in my clothes, in my clothes, For he, verse 21, for he has made him to be sin for us and knew no sin that he or that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In closing scripture, Romans 1.17, I want you to leave here with this. Romans 1.17. I want you to leave here with this. Please. You know, it's not easy standing on the platform and speaking the unadulterated word of God. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. But I owe gratitude to my pastor because he's doing a tremendous work, him and his wife here. Tremendous work. To give me an opportunity to stand here in his steed and preach this gospel. I owe gratitude, deep gratitude. Preach this gospel all across the nation. And when I tell you this, when I, when I tell you this, this is, the gospel truth. A lot of people want to hurt me. Seriously. We're coming in and tearing things up and leaving a mess and just leaving. But I only do what God asked me to do. I don't mean no harm because I love each and every one of you collectively. My well-being is to see us all in this body and all the bodies that are out there rejoice when that time comes. So please, don't think I'm an arch enemy of the gospel. All I'm doing is what God asked me to do. And can't nothing stop that but God. The enemy is always trying his best. He's trying his best. He's trying to get rid of me. He don't like me. When I get up in the morning, it's like, dang, here come that nuisance again. Who he going to talk to on the phone again? Who he going to counsel again? Who he going to give the word to again? Who he going to tell the truth to again? I just can't get nowhere around this man. So he comes in and he tries to afflict my home. <sighs> tries to afflict me tried to afflict things, you know, like my vehicles and things like that. And he tried to afflict me any kind of way he can. But I just tell him, <laughs> Satan, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwells therein. So nothing belongs to me, not even myself. And once you understand that you don't even belong to you, then God will reconcile himself to you. And the thrill won't be gone. 
you won't. You don't. He'll bring back that long, that long suffering, that joy, that peace, that love, that mercy, that grace. He'll bring it all back. He'll bring back the fruit into your life. He'll bring it back. As we close, Romans 1.17, For therein is the righteousness of God, revealed from faith to faith. That is is written, the just shall live by faith. The just, the righteous, the ones that's reconciling themselves, the one that's trying to work out a marriage. But you know, if it don't work out, don't be afraid to let it go. If it don't work out, just give it some time to see if there's something there. It takes time to bring things back into the graces of a dysfunctional relationship. It takes time. But we say we want to believe in God and have God try to fix it. No. God say you fix it. I'll just help you along the way. God is not going to change nothing into your life until your heart is right. So don't keep thinking I'm going to have God. No, God ain't going to do nothing. Because my Bible says he'll turn your earth into iron and your heaven into brass. And it'll be like a tingling symbol to his ears every time you speak. I hear nothing. I gave you the blueprint and you didn't want to do it. That's why we started off in Ezekiel. He gave him the blueprint. He wanted to reconcile himself. He loved him. He loves you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on today, dear Father. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing, all that you have done. And I know, Father, there's things on people's mind today. Father God, you already know that, that this is a game day on today, dear Father God. But don't fault them, Father God, because they want to watch the game. Just prick their heart to let them not forget about you. And to reconcile you. And those of you, those of you that are out there that need to leave anything here today at the altar, please come for it. Please come for it. Please come for it. If there's nothing in your heart, if there's nothing in your and your heart is right with God. That's okay. For those out you that want to be saved and baptized, all you have to do is repent. Acts 2.38. Repent and be ye baptized. We have our pastor, have our ministers up here in the front. For those of you that need prayer, please. This is the only time I beg. Just don't be afraid to come up and let go. Let go so you can reconcile yourself back with God. Got qualified people up here in the front. God anointed and appointed them. He anointed and appointed them to speak to your heart right now. He wants to speak to you. He wants to talk to you. wants to talk to you. The next voice you'll hear will be from our moderator, Elder Tom. Messenger, and for the message, amen, amen. It is giving time. Aren't we glad about that? Amen. Our giving scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 7. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, 
and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. There are three ways to give here at Revive Church. You can text any amount to 84321, and you will receive a link back where you can uh, click on that and uh, be able to give that way. Uh, you can go to revivechurchatl.org and click on the giving tab and give any amount there. On my right, your left, is a giving box. There are envelopes where you can come up and give here. Um, we just appreciate you coming out. Thank you. God bless you. Those on Facebook, God bless you as well. Any first-time guests that we have here, young lady in the back, will be glad to greet you and uh, give you a gift and get some information from you. Um, so thank you for coming out. Again, God bless you. Have a great week ahead. Thank you.